Hi, my name is John Stage and this is Dude Food. Today we're going to be doing a Texas style beef chili. Start with the bacon. So I want to get this rendering while I'm working over here. So I'm real close so I can keep an eye on this bacon. So the beef, we're using a chuck or stew meat. You can use brisket. You can just don't use anything too lean. And let's just do a little quick cut. And if you got any big hunks of fat, that's what you want to trim away. But this meat is as lean as I would want it, so it looks pretty good. It is important to make sure your beef is all the same size. You don't want one hunk like that, one hunk like that. Then you're going to have different doneness at different times. All right, so this bacon is rendering up pretty good. Let me get, let me get this out. I'm going to give this a little more heat. And now we're going, to, uh, we're going to take this meat, we're going to season it up. Just make sure it's all coated. Okay. Then working in batches, we're going to add the meat to the pan. Now the key is not to overcrowd this. It's probably going to take about two batches. We're not looking to cook these things all the way through. We're just looking to get a good browning on the ends of them. This is a cheap and expensive meat. This is, this, is a, this is chuck. Chuck is usually used to be ground in a hamburger. So you couldn't just pan fry this real quick and eat it, expect it to be tender. This has got to go real long, low, and slow. It's got to be a good braise. All right, we got all the beef out now. Now I'm going to evaluate, I'm going to need a little bit more oil. So the bacon, it's all mixed in with that meat right now. But we're going to, we're now going to put in the onions and peppers. And what this is going to do is it's going to deglaze the pan a little bit because the, um, the moisture from the onions and peppers, and this is a very important part right now, the moisture from the onions and peppers. So we took onions, peppers, now we got jalapenos. And all those little bits that are sticking to the bottom of that pan, if we're lucky right now, the onions and peppers are going to lift that off. We've got a couple of bay leaves. So what we're going to do now, season this. So we season that, but the onions and peppers need seasoning. Okay, so I'm going to put that garlic where to go. Okay. We got a nice medium high heat going. Let's add the beef stock. Let's say you don't have a beef stock. What works really well is beer. Okay. And we're gonna add the um, add the tomatoes at the same time. We're gonna let that get to a, a low boil, and then we're gonna add the meat into it. And then we're gonna add our spices. Do it slowly. See, look at this. Look at all that beautiful beef juice. That just adds nothing but flavor to this dish. Gently move that in. Very nice. And now just, oh yeah, this is going to be really good. We got the nucleus of the chili. Now let's, let's turn it into a chili. So we have uh, fresh ground anchos. Anchos adding heat. It's adding raisin. It's adding, it's earthy. The pasilla, heat, and it adds a little, a little more of a bitterness and like coffee-like. I like a little brown sugar just to balance out. We have the acidic and the savory. I just like a little bit of sweet in there. Not much, you'll never know it's there. It just balances everything out. Cumin, hmm, I just love it. We're gonna put a cinnamon stick in. Blink. We're gonna put the lid on. Now. Check the scores, check the game, read the paper, do something, but leave this alone for a minute. All right, so over here, we've got one that has been cooking for a while. And if you look, the fat's at the top for a reason, because it wants to come off. You don't want to work that fat back into it, because it's gonna, it, it, the chili will have an oily taste to it. So we're gonna get rid of it. Okay, we're gonna finish it with a little oregano. A little bit of cilantro and then a little bit of lime juice just to give it that pop and we're going to get rid of a couple things 
We're going to get rid of that cinnamon stick. If we find the uh, bay leaf, we'll get rid of that too. A little more salt. I want some more of those chilies in there. Some more pepper. Just because the recipe says something, you always got to adjust. Remember, we've been seasoning everything from the beef to the onions to the peppers. So you did all that. Now you want to make sure it, it's, it's where you want it to be. And I, I, I think it needed a little more seasoning. Hmm, okay. All right, we are, we are there. We are now there. We popped in some cornbread, which just goes beautifully with this dish. Let's grab that. What I like to do, this is where me and my southern friends part ways, I like to, uh, I like to hit the cornbread with a little bit of honey. Just to, it's a nice counterpart. Just brush that on. And always brush it on when it comes right out of the oven. Then it's just kind of like, cornbread kind of sucks it right in. It's pretty hot, so we'll cut that in a minute. Okay, let's ladle up this chili. The star to show right here. Okay, look at that, beautiful. It's rich, it's spicy. And the way I like to finish this, a little bit of cheddar cheese. And the chili's so hot, it'll, it'll slowly melt it. A little bit of uh, diced red onion. And then some scallion. Some pickled jalapenos would be nice if you got them. But there it is, Texas beef chili, cornbread. I'm John Stage, this is Dude Food. Don't forget to subscribe. Who here knew Gangnam was Korean for delicious? Okay, that's a lie, but check out Richard Blaze's mouth-watering Gangnam-style burger anyway. Want to get lucky? That's just one reason why you should try eating this bird saliva soup. Take Southern-style food to the next level here with David Gauze's meat, cheese, and gravy masterpiece. Dr. Pepper Brownies. Are we mad or just mad enough? Find out how they turn out here. Subscribe for more free tasted treats.